afraid to ask him? Could not be more terrified. <laughs> well, I think you should seriously consider the marriage thing. Give Rachel another chance to dress up like Princess Bubble Yum. <laughs> Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for times Chandler was the one we could depend on for a hysterical yet brutal sarcastic comment. Okay, I was wrong. That's what they used to cover Connecticut. <laughs> <laughs> Number 10, A.A. A. Milne. Where I get back, it's Chair City, and I'm the guy who's sitting in a chair. As far as episodes where the whole cast is iconic, the one where no one's ready is one that fires on all cylinders. We open on Chandler deciding not to spare Joey the horror of drinking fat. The evening escalates into 20 minutes of each member of the group raising Ross's blood pressure by being hyper-focused on something other than getting out the door. While we sympathize with Ross's plight, Chandler simply wanting his seat back is relatable. Well, it's not like I went to Spain. <laughs> I went to the bathroom. You knew I was coming back. What's the big deal? Sit somewhere else. The big deal is I was sitting there last. So, it's my seat. He tries every intimidation tactic, including sitting on Joey, but his friend can't be moved. We must say Chandler may need to brush up on his Winnie the Pooh readings, but his point stands. All right, you will notice that I am fully dressed. I, in turn, have noticed that you are not. So, in the words of A.A. A. Milne, Get out of my chair, dill hole. Conversely, Joey has his Chandler impression down to an art. Look at me, I'm Chandler. Could I be wearing any more clothes? <laughs> Number nine, personal and professional. Joey's role as Dr. Drake Ramore on Days of Our Lives is arguably his best and most well-known role. So I just talked to one of the dual writers today and- What is dual? Days of Our Lives. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, you're not gonna believe it, my character is coming out of his coma! So when he gets the call that the good doctor is coming out of his coma, he rushes over to tell everyone. But he follows it up with an apparent non sequitur that he'll also be receiving a new brain. Chandler, never one to waste an opportunity, interjects with yet another one of his clever remarks. And, and, and not only that, I'm getting a new brain! <laughs> so great things are happening at work, and in your personal life. <laughs> Call this a fastball, because Chandler hits this joke out of the park. Not to derail from Chandler here, but Joey's pretty ruthless in this scene, too. Case in point. <laughs> what? A brain transplant? It's ridiculous. Well, I think it's ridiculous that you haven't had sex in three and a half months. <laughs> Number eight, to be young again. When Joey tells his friends he's up for a part in a commercial playing a 19-year-old, they're pretty dubious. I gotta look good. Supposed to be playing a 19 year old. <laughs> what? So when you said get up early, did you mean 1986? To show he can pass for a teenager, Joey dresses up like one, or at least his idea of one. His absurd outfit and use of youth slang has Chandler borderline speechless. Thankfully, for our entertainment, he doesn't remain that way for long. Come on, am I 19 or what? <laughs> yes. On a scale from 1 to 10, 10 being the dumbest a person can look, you are definitely 19. While Joey may be trying to act off the hook here, it's more like he's off the charts ridiculous, as is Chandler's absolutely wicked burn. Yes, you can pass for 19. Really? Yes. Seriously. Seriously? Seriously, no, okay? <laughs> you can play your own age, which is 31. <gasps> Number 7, Bo Peep. Rachel's invitation to her ex's wedding leads to much hilarity for everyone else, especially since her bridesmaid's dress looks like something even a Barbie doll would consider too pink. Oh my god! <laughs> you look so good! While Chandler's initial reactions involve a fit of laughter and calling her Princess Bubble Yum, his most devastating joke happens when Ross and Rachel drop by before the wedding. Now, with her complimentary hat, Rachel's outfit manages to get somehow pinker. I'm sorry, we don't have your sheep. The Little Bo Peep comparison is so perfect, we just have to commend whoever wrote the line. It even gets a coy smile out of actor Matthew Perry. Tonight, all I really wanted was to make it through this evening with a little bit of grace and dignity. Well, I guess we can all agree that's not gonna happen. <laughs> Number six, same girl. At Central Perk, Chandler teases Ross about a woman he started dating. So Ross, how was your date the other night? Did you tell her about the magical ride that starts with the flush of every toilet? 
After he leaves to call her, Joey arrives and reveals that he's also dating someone new, who coincidentally lives in the same place Ross's new Belle does. Both also reveal that this mystery girl is seeing someone else. How'd it go? Oh, great. We're going out again Saturday. But I just found out she's also seeing some other guy. Chandler, of course, puts two and two together and can barely contain his glee. Although he reluctantly gets up to leave, he has one parting savage moment where he asks both Ross and Joey the name of the woman they're dating, only to split when they say the same name. I wish I didn't have to go, believe me. <laughs> but unfortunately, I have to. Oh, um, by the way, what's the name of the girl you're dating? Kristen Lay. Bye! Chandler's a true agent of chaos in this moment, and we love it. Number 5. Monica on Camera Whenever we get a glimpse into the characters' pasts, it's generally a recipe for some top-shelf comedy. You know what this is? This is us getting ready for the prom! You know what, you guys? We don't have to watch this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. After Monica's parents drop off a box of her things, she finds a video of her and Rachel getting ready for prom that the gang decides to watch. Work on your music? <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say much is revealed. We don't condone fat shaming, and this is certainly not Chandler's finest hour, but there's no denying that his quip here is among his most savage insults. Some girl ate Monica. <laughs> Shut up, the camera adds 10 pounds. Uh, so how many cameras are actually on you? <laughs> Number four, might as well be walking on the... Stop staring at my wife's legs. No, no, stop staring at your sister's legs. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just, how do you get so tan? When Ross goes to a spray tan salon, the results are, as you might imagine, disastrous. He gets the count wrong and is sprayed unevenly leaving him with a ridiculously dark front half and a pale back half. When Ross laments his misfortune to Monica and Chandler, the latter has a field day. Oh, and it gets worse. <laughs> oh my God, you can do a duet of Ebony and Ivory all by yourself. Although his remarks on Ross being able to perform Ebony and Ivory by himself are pretty cutting, his opening outburst is as red hot as its metaphor. There's something different. <laughs> I went to that tanning place your wife suggested. Was that place the sun? He may not have gotten a natural tan, but Ross still got sun burned. Number three, Q-tip. Many of Chandler's quips come with regards to Joey's, how do we put this, um, slow wittedness. <clears throat> oh, hey Chandler, when you see Frankie, tell him Joey Tribbiani says hello. He'll know what it means. <laughs> You sure he's gonna be able to crack that code? But this line easily tops all the others. When Chandler asks his friends to recommend a good tailor, Joey suggests his longtime one, Frankie. Hey, anybody know a good tailor? You need some clothes altered? No, no, I'm just looking for a man to draw on me with chalk. He claims to have gone to him since he was 15 or 16, whenever 1990 was. At any rate, Chandler's cutting response is absolutely brutal. No, excuse me. 15. All right, when was 1990? Okay, you have to stop the Q-tip when there's resistance. The line is actually a favorite of Matthew Perry's, and it's no wonder since the actor reportedly came up with it himself. Even the physical comedy here is on point. Number two, Scottish. Monica and Chandler's wedding has everyone a buzz. Even Ross is looking to do something for his sister and best friend on their special day. Okay, well, uh, yeah, I guess I guess I could do that too. <laughs> too? <laughs> yeah, I kind of uh, <clears throat> have something else planned for you guys. Unfortunately, he decides on learning to play the bagpipes. It's not long before the happy couple hear Ross practicing and become decidedly less happy. While Monica's setup is great, Chandler really goes for the jugular with his response. Why is your family Scottish? Why is your family Ross? If Chandler was worried about hurting Ross's feelings, comments like these probably aren't the best way to avoid that. 
If his soon-to-be brother-in-law heard that remark, he'd deflate faster than his wheezing instrument. How did you know about that? We heard you play all the way from your apartment. Were you the ones who called the cops? <laughs> That's not really important right now. Before we get to our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Bambi's mom. Oof, right in the childhood. Well, see, now that I can see crying over, but Bambi is a cartoon. You didn't cry when Bambi's mother died? Yes, it was very sad when the guy stopped drawing the deer. Hannibal Lecter. Eddie doesn't even seem like he appreciates a nice Chianti. That's it. It's over. I want you out. I want you out of the apartment now. Whoa, what, what, what are you talking about, man? Hannibal Lecter? <laughs> better roommate than you. No. <laughs> Lion Tamer. Are we the only ones who think paleontology's cool? Okay. <laughs> no accountants. Oh, and no one from, like, legal. I don't like guys with boring jobs. Oh, and Ross was like, what, a lion tamer? <laughs> Success? Low blows? Can we interest anyone in some low blows? Ross! Okay, maybe it wasn't my best decision, but I just couldn't face another failed marriage. Uh, okay, let me just jump in and ask, at what point did you think this was a successful marriage? <laughs> Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Resolutions Rant New Year's prompts the gang to share their resolutions for the coming trip around the sun. After Chandler mocks some of his friends' aspirations, he makes a bet with Ross to go a week without making fun of them. I'll take that bet, my friend. And you know what? Paying me the 50 bucks can be the new thing you do that day. <laughs> and it starts right now. Unfortunately for Chandler, his friends give him plenty of ammo, from Ross wearing leather pants, to Phoebe's regular brand of guitar instruction, to Ross's new girlfriend's name. Oh, guess what? Uh, I have a date with uh, Elizabeth Hornswoggle. <laughs> Hornswoggle? Oh, this must be killing you. <laughs> the fact that all of them ignore the obvious joke potential is enough to drive Chandler to his wit's end. By the end of the episode, he finally caves and pays Ross, before going off on a rapid-fire rant. One that's strangely satisfying for both him and the audience. And Ross, phone call for you today, Tom Jones. He wants his pants back. <laughs> and Hornswoggle, what are you, dating a character from Fraggle Rock? If you miss Matthew Perry as much as we do, share your favorite Chandler moment in the comments. I'm not great at the advice. Can I interest you in a sarcastic comment? Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.